Hi, here I am back with my video blog. I'm in South Africa, in Johannesburg actually. And I have to say that every time I land on African soil, I get goosebumps. Because, I mean, after all, this is where we all originated from. That is an incredible feeling for me. Johannesburg, of course, I mean, South Africa, not just Johannesburg, has a very checkered history. And we all know that. Still home to many ancient tribes. But Johannesburg is a very modern city, very good infrastructure, one of the main emerging market countries now. But what I wanted to talk about was my experience doing some ecosystem research for innovation related to products and services. So I found myself having to go to do the research in what are called townships. And perhaps many of you may be aware of what the townships are. They were created as supposedly black-only settlements during the apartheid era. They're not, of course, anything to do with racial segregation anymore. But I was told that the townships are where poorer people live. They're very dangerous. There's a lot of criminal activity. To be very careful. And so what I had in mind, the image I had in mind was sort of to paraphrase Thomas Hobbes. This was going to be a place where life is nasty, brutish and short. I expected darkness and intense discontent. And so I went in there. But what I found was just incredibly mind-blowing for me. So I spoke with many people because of the research and what completely surprised me and was very unexpected for me was this theme, the common theme of dignity and self-respect that was present everywhere. So different from what I had expected, so different from what I have experienced in, you know, what compares perhaps to townships in some ways in other Asian countries. I had not expected in the middle of obvious constraints in terms of resources, obvious disadvantages, I had not expected people to have such a strong but quiet sense of dignity and self-respect. And also an incredible need for self-actualization, you know, referring to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So these were people who had a lot of trouble making, you know, both ends meet. Money was a big problem, even though the government really helped in many ways, but still it was a problem. But however, every one of them had an interest and awareness and even contributed to larger causes, whether it was environmental or community education or HIV AIDS related work. It was incredible. It was not just about their own, you know, self-centered needs that they talked about. And as a researcher and as an innovator, what I saw was, and what I heard were voices that said, why do you want to have these products and services created that you label as being for the poor? Why do you keep calling us poor? And you give us things that are specially meant for us. Why do you treat us with such indignity? Why do you tell us that we can only use the mobile phone for our banking requirements, for example, that we can't go into a branch? Why? This was just very unexpected at one level and very touching and very inspiring that a population 
who struggled so much, so intensely, and were in areas that still stood for some level of inequality in society, but still, they had a spirit which was sort of manifested at a higher level than I have seen in similar populations. And so, as a designer, I came back really questioning myself about the, the sort of, was it right to say there was a bottom of the pyramid and so there were special business models, special products, special services that we would innovate and design and label them as being for the bottom of the pyramid? Was it right? This was the first time that the ecosystem where I was doing my research made me rethink and question some of those fundamental premises. And every day I came back from the research from the township of Umlazi feeling really, really overwhelmed and touched by what I had seen. And it reminded me, but you know, one of those famous lines that had not made real sense before, that the only darkness about Africa is really our ignorance of it. It's just so true. And before I say bye for this time, I have to tell you that if you're ever in Johannesburg, please don't miss coming to this museum, the Apartheid Museum. I usually never talk about specific places, but this is, a, is, is an experience that's deeply moving and you will never forget it. So never ever miss the opportunity of visiting this museum. See you next time then, from wherever I may be.